Okay, uh, we've talked about the controller. Let's talk about the inverter a little bit. Um, this really acts as the brains of your system. The controller um, really kind of is the workhorse. Uh, maybe you could call that the muscle of the system. The inverter is really the brains. And um, what we have here is a Xantrax. And this is a uh, 4024. 4024. So what that means, it's a 4000 watt inverter, which means it can handle 4000 watts at any given time as a load and 24 volt input. Remember that our batteries were 24 volt. So you have to match the input of the inverter to your battery bank. Okay? So this menu, this menu is going to be different on every inverter, but I'm just going to run through some basic uh, functionality. We have a, a backup generator on our system, and I'll show you that how that works. Um, but basically, it's pretty simple. This inverter is uh, uh, grid capable. We don't have the grid here, so it's not an option for us, and we don't want it. But um, you could this function right here, search. What this will do is it'll just search for uh, power essentially. It can search off the grid, it can search off the batteries. Um, this inverter doesn't take power from the photovoltaic array from the solar panels. All it does is take it from the battery. So if the batteries are dead, um, it then will automatically switch on the generator. That's why this is on auto. Okay. Some of the other fun functionality of this um, trace engineering, we wouldn't mess with any of that. The meters is nice to know because this shows you the load. This is what the house is using in amps. Okay, and the inverter takes DC power and turns it into 110 AC power. So 110 by uh, about 4 amps is about 440 watts. So that's what the house is using right now. So when we need to know uh, maybe why our batteries aren't lasting that long or anything that's going on with our system, I come and look at this right away. And sometimes this will be up to 12. So we'll be using over 13, 1400 watts out of the house. And we'll say what's going on and we'll find that maybe the water pump is on or uh, somebody's left something on, somebody's left a bunch of lights on, or maybe we've got a visitor who's using a hair dryer <laughs> in the basement that we didn't know about. So. Um, this is very nice to know here. Uh, there's meters. Uh, error causes. Sometimes this red light will come on here. It's usually if the generator won't start. That's the only error cause we've ever had, actually. Uh, if the generator wouldn't start when the batteries uh, wore down. Uh, then you can go through here and the, and the error causes will... Uh, you can flip through here. This is overcurrent. We've never had any of these errors come up. Knock on wood. Um, time of day. Generator timer. This deals with when the generator will run and not run. You know, the generator can be loud, so you can set it to run just during daylight hours. Uh, and this is the end of the, of the user menu. If you hit these two buttons at the same time, let's see if I can do it on the first try. No. Uh, Anyway, if you, if you hit those two buttons at the same time, you kind of get into an advanced menu. Um, and it, again, every inverter is going to be different, so you could look at that if you wanted to. Um, I don't really mess with that much. Uh, I come out here to work on the generator now and then. I come out here to check the meter. And the only other thing we have to do is... Um, equalize equalize the batteries um, what happens is the batteries uh, they build up a solid on their plates and they uh, can all, that can cause them all to have a little bit of a different voltage and different levels of charge so what we do is we fire up the generator and you can see right here there's auto, there's on, that would just turn the generator on, and then there's equalize. 
that would equalize the batteries and that's a preset time frame for us it's four hours and what it does is it just runs the voltage up in those batteries and literally the chemical reaction starts bubbling and uh, really um, vibrating and knocks all that condensate off those plates so we do that about every four to six weeks to equalize those batteries. You'll notice that your battery performance will just kind of get worse over a couple months. Uh, it, it'll just, you just have less and less power. You equalize and that kind of resets everything. Um, the other thing that this thing controls is absorption, uh, float, and um, let's see, there's bulk charging, float charging, and absorption. Bolt charging is charging the batteries, and this is also managed by the charge controller. These two talk to each other. Uh, bolt charging is really just the majority of the charging on a battery. Let's say that's 80% full is bolt charging. Then you have float charging, which is the remaining 20%. And then uh, absorption is just kind of a topping off. So you'll see those terms. You don't really need to mess with them much. All of this is preset in the system. But you'll see those terms when, you, when it comes to inverters and chargers and stuff like that. Um, sometimes when we need to equalize, a nice little trick, um, if, you, if you just put this inverter to equalize, the only time it will actually equalize is when your batteries run out of power and then the generator automatically kicks on anyway. Well, if you do that, you use a ton of propane because it's running the batteries from empty all the way up to way above full to get that vibration that we talked about. So a lot of times what we'll do is we'll wait till the batteries are full and then trick this thing into thinking that the batteries are empty with the low battery cutoff number, okay? So the low battery cutoff number is when the generator will kick on. And right now it's set to about 22.8 volts. Well, I'll come in here and I'll change that number to, let's say, 26 volts. And that will trick the inverter into saying, well, the batteries, um, we, have to, we have to initiate low battery cutoff and therefore start the generator. So uh, let's say the uh, equalization will take the batteries up to 31 volts. Okay, so instead of going from 22 volts, which is empty, up to 31 volts, which is uh, at equalization, you're only going from 26 or 27 volts to 31 volts. Okay, so you're saving all that propane that you would take to get from 22 to 31. Instead, you're just going from 26 to 31. And, and let, let me explain a little bit more about that. Um, Let's go back over here to the charge controller. You can see here we're at about 23.9 volts. Okay, so a lot of people wonder, well, what is that? Is that full? That's actually kind of low. Um, when you hear about a 24 volt system, full is right around what we would call full is probably around 25, maybe 26 volts. Empty is right around 22 and a half volts okay so it's not like there's 0 to 10 or 0 to 100 it goes really from 22 to about 25 26 all right um, the same is true of a 12 volt system except it's just cut in half 11 volts is about empty and 14 or 13 volts is about full so you have to kind of get adjust your scale and know what this number really means. That's the out, that's the voltage in the, the batteries. And right now it's about halfway. When it gets up to about 24.8, I would consider it full. Uh, it will bounce up when the wattage cranks up. When we get 12, 1300 volts, I will see this voltage jump up to like 26, 27 volts. And that's when this charge controller will actually switch off the power from the, uh, the array to protect the battery so we don't overcharge them. Uh, we don't want to overcharge them on a regular basis. 
but like I said with the equalization we actually uh, wind them all the way up to 31 volts and just to get that vibration so if you do that every once in a while it helps your batteries but if you were to over overcharge them on a regular basis it would ruin them so that's kind of counterintuitive but that's a little nuance of, of batteries and off-grid living uh, next up let's talk about the generator